Um, optical isomerism comes up a lot, and it's the final type of isomerism we need to talk about at A level. So, last lesson we looked at these two molecules. So, I've got a carbon attached to four different groups. Doesn't matter what the groups are, they're just four different groups here. If that's the case, and I reflect it in a mirror, like so, it would look, ooh, not like that. Do, 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 do. So that might be anhydrous. Continue, okay. I think the anhydrous. Just like on the right line. Oh, is that that yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe should cut that out. Um, so this is the mirror image of it. Are you happy that this is reflected in this? If I try and rotate, well, if I rotate the mirror image around like so, I cannot superimpose this molecule onto this. The yellow is where the white is um, on opposite sides. So they're mirrors, and we talked about the fact it's like your hands, that your hands are mirror images of each other, and you cannot superimpose one on the other. This type of isomerism will happen for organic molecules where you've got four different groups attached to your carbon. So it only happens in those special cases. And it works because you've got tetrahedral, um, a carbon tetrahedral center. So optical isomerism, um, these occur when a carbon atom is attached to four different groups. It can happen uh, in other areas of chemistry as well which we'll, we'll look at a bit later on, but at the moment we're just going to say it's carbon. So what they always want you to do is they want you to draw it. So, um, I am going to use a amino acid. So let's have a look. The simplest amino acid is glycine. Glycine is this guy here. Brilliant, yeah, he is not an optical isomer. Because if I look at that carbon, I've got two hydrogens attached, so he is not an optical isomer. However, it has to be four. If I change that H to a CH3, duh, I have now got a methyl group, carboxylic acid, a hydrogen, a bit of dodgy one there, and an amine group, which means I now have a carbon attached to four different groups. To show it's an optical, uh, well, an optical isomer, and that is the carbon what it is. I put a little star by him. He's the star of the molecule. <laughs> he is the carbon that's got the business going on. And he is called a chiral center. So that there is my chiral is that what we're going to? <laughs> Chiral center. But. If they ask you to draw the optical isomer, do not draw it like that. You must always draw it in the 3D representation. Uh, so, this is how you do it. You, well, you can do it different ways. This is how I would do it. And uh, I'm not. So, you would put, it? you put one group up there. It doesn't matter which order you do it initially. So I will put the carboxylic acid group there. Again, try and keep it as simple as possible. So don't do the C double bond OOH, just put C O O H. The wedgie coming out here yeah. is, let's do that as being the NH2 group. And then the one going back, we will put as the H. Like no, it doesn't matter which way you do it, actually. Where it's important is when I do my other one. So it doesn't matter which way you do that. Let's put a little star. I didn't leave space for that. Okay, you can do it below. So I'm going to now draw the opposite one. So you put your carbon. The methyl group will still be sticking up. This one now, if you try and reflect it in your mind, will be going that way. Then you've got 
The wedge coming out is NH2, and the one going back is going to be H. And that's how you draw it, and let's put a star by him as well. So that is a basic 3D representation. It's not brilliant, but that will get you the marks in the exam. Yeah.